Hello Arts 102, welcome to the Rhythm and Line units. This is actually two keynotes in one, so I've actually got uh, very short rhythm units, pretty simple. Um, basically I just combine these two and I've got a link to the same thing in both units. You don't have to watch it twice, it's just there for posterity, but you know if you need to review it's available. So uh, let's get started with a short film to introduce you. Once upon a time, there was a sensible straight line who was hopelessly in love with a dot. You're the beginning and the end, the hub, the core and the quintessence, he told her tenderly. But the frivolous dot wasn't a bit interested, for she only had eyes for a wild and unkempt squiggle who never seemed to have anything on his mind at all. They were everywhere together, singing and dancing and frolicking and laughing and laughing and Lord knows what else. He's so gay and free, so uninhibited and full of joy, she cried rapturously. And you're as stiff as a stick, dull, conventional and repressed, tied and trammeled, Subdued, smothered, and stifled. Squashed, squelched, and quenched. Why take chances, the line argued without much conviction? I'm dependable, steady, consistent. I know where I'm going. I've got dignity. But this was small consolation for the miserable line. Each day he grew more and more morose. He stopped eating or sleeping, and before long was completely on edge. His worried friends noticed how terribly thin and drawn he was and did their best to cheer him up. She's not good enough for you. She lacks depth. They all look alike anyway. Why don't you find a nice straight line and settle down? But he hardly heard a word they said. For any way he looked at her, she was perfect. He saw things in her that no one else could possibly imagine. She's more beautiful than any straight line I've ever seen, he sighed wistfully. But even allowing for his feelings, this was probably stretching a point. And so he spent his time dreaming of the inconstant dot and imagining himself as the forceful figure she was sure to admire. The line is a celebrated daredevil. The line is a leader in world affairs. The line is a fearless law enforcement agent. The line is a potent force in the world of art. The line is an international sportsman. The 
that he soon grew tired of self-deception and decided that perhaps the squiggle might have had the answer after all. I lack spontaneity. I must learn to let go, to be free, to express the inner passionate me. But it didn't make any difference, for no matter how often or how hard he tried, he always ended up the same way. And yet he continued trying and failing and trying again until when he had all but given up, he discovered at last that with great concentration and self-control, he was able to change direction and bend wherever he chose. So he did and made an angle. And then again and made another and then another and then another and then another, and then another, and then another. Hot stuff, he shouted, much impressed with his efforts, and in a wild burst of enthusiasm, sat up for half the night, putting on an outrageous display of sides, bends, and angles. Freedom is not a license for chaos, he observed the next morning. Oh, what a head! There and then, he decided not to squander his talents in cheap exhibitionism. For months, he practiced in secret. Soon, he was making squares and triangles, hexagons, parallelograms, rhomboids, polyhedrons, trapezoids, parallel pipettes, decagons, tetragrams, and an infinite number of other shapes, so complex that he had to letter his sides and angles to keep his place. Before long, he had learned to carefully control ellipses, circles, and complex curves, and to express himself in any shape he wished. You name it, I'll play it. But all his successes meant nothing to him alone, and so off he went to seek the dot once again. You again, muttered the squiggle in a voice that sounded like bad plumbing. You don't stand a chance. But the line was bursting with old love and new confidence, and he was not to be denied, for now he was dazzling. Clever. Mysterious. Versatile. Erudite. Eloquent. Profound. Enigmatic. Complex. And compelling. The dot was overwhelmed. She giggled like a schoolgirl and didn't know what to do with her hands. Then she turned to the squiggle who had suddenly developed a severe cramp. Well, she inquired, trying to give him every chance. The squiggle, taken by surprise, did the best he could. Is that all? She demanded. I guess so, replied the miserable squiggle. That is, I suppose so. What I mean is I never know how it's going to turn out. Hey, have you heard the one about the two guys who... <laughs> Not wondered why she'd never noticed how hairy and coarse he was, how untidy and graceless, and how he mispronounced his L's and picked his ear. And suddenly she realized that what she thought was freedom and joy was nothing but anarchy and sloth. You are as meaningless as a melon, she said coolly. Undisciplined, unkempt and unaccountable, insignificant, indeterminate and inadvertent. Out of shape, out of order, out of place and out of luck. With that, she turned to the line and shyly took his arm. 
do the one with all the funny curves again, honey, she cooed softly. And he did, and soon they did, and lived, if not happily ever after, at least reasonably so. So there you go. Let's talk about line. Line is a form with length, but no width or depth. And that is a relative term in art, unlike mathematics. Um, line very literally has no width or depth in mathematics. But in art, as you can see, the bottom lines kind of get thicker and thicker. So um, if it's perceived as a line, it's a line. And there can also be um, implied lines and things that your mind makes a line so it's not too literal uh, a line is a form with length but no width or depth it can be a boundary of a shape and it can be dynamic or convey a sense of movement rhythm texture or pattern um, this term I don't entirely agree with that's a term that the department uses I would call it more of a an imaginary line or a psychological line. But anyway, um, if a figure glances or gestures, figure looking or pointing at something, um, that's going to create an idea that in the in the viewer's head that there's a line happening between the figure and whatever they're looking or pointing at. Like I said in a previous unit, it really works like magic too. <clears throat> Outline is a line that is concrete, concretely drawn to describe the edge of a object or a figure. Um, often used for animated cartoons, comic books, stuff like that, that type of graphic sort of art. Outline, hard outlines are often used for out animated cartoons, comics, and other graphic arts. Um, in the finer arts, particularly life drawing and life painting, hard outlining is strongly discouraged. They don't want you using hard outlines, they want you to kind of draw values. <clears throat> A gesture drawing is a free-form figure drawing, typically completed in about five minutes or so, maybe less. The movement, the pose, and the feel of the character is more important than perfect accuracy in a gesture drawing. You might do some of those if you take the life drawing class. Line can be used to convey meaning in design. So on the left we've got hot coffee, and uh, on the right there we've got loud coffee. Um, in the middle, I can't remember if that's, I think that's radioactive coffee. So that's line being used to convey meaning. Line can be used as value by hatching or cross hatching. You can use that to create value. Um, where the cr lines are closer together and um, thicker, they're going to create a sense of a darker shade and allow the creation of shadows and the illusion of three dimensionality. That type of technique is very common in comic book art due to the way they have to print it. Crosshatching is a pattern of closely sketched lines used to create perceived value changes. And there's a little call out, you can see the crosshatched lines. There you go. Rhythm. Visual rhythm is created when the viewer's eye begins moving through the composition. Uh, it's a pattern of movements created by the way marks and spaces are organized. Visual rhythm needs contrast to function, whether it is soft versus hard, dark versus light, slow versus hectic. The easiest way to create rhythm is by using regular repetition. Staccato rhythm, abrupt, violent changes in rhythm, hard, percussive, if you will, visually speaking. That's staccato. Legato is a connected and flowing rhythm, soft, smooth, wavy, curvy lines or patterns. Okay, and alternating rhythm, that's a rhythm created by repeating two or more elements on a regular, interchanging, and anticipated basis. And last but not least, progressive rhythm. That is the repetition of a shape that changes in a regular pattern, such as a series of circles that increases or decreases in size. And it doesn't have to be size. It can be a lot of different things, some um, property of the shape or um, line quality. It can be a color 
progression or um, a contrast progression, anything like that, those will all work. Okay, thank you very much.